guys, what's up? Welcome back. This is part five of the Fruit Ninja tutorial series in Scratch. In this episode, we're going to be adding some mouse particles and some critical hits to our game. So let's start by adding the particles. So let's create a new sprite, go to costumes, and upload the costume. The link to this is in the description below. It's called particle. We will open that, and then you can delete the first one. And in our code, we want this to follow the mouse, but we're going to create clones of it since they're like a bunch of little particles. You'll, you'll see what I mean. Um, and we're going to say forever if mouse is down, then create clone of myself. And then we're going to need a when I start as clone. We're going to, first of all, we need to hide the original spawner and show the clones. And then we're going to set our size to let's say 75 percent and so this is a 20 by 20 so 75 will make it 15 by 15 pixels and then we're going to have a go to and we're going to be basically creating a grid type system for these particles um, and so i'll explain how you do that so you need to first of all uh, take a divided by and take the mouse x divide it by 15 since that's the width of the square or the length really and then go to operators uh, round this number and then multiply the whole thing by 15 you can duplicate this and change it to mouse Y by going to sensing and dragging in that mouse Y and then you can bring this into the Y place and this here so here uh, you can see that it follows in this grid system. Now let's add some cooler animations to this. First of all, we're going to add some randomness to where the particles spawn. So we're going to say change x by, and then we're going to drag in a pick random and a multiplication. And we're going to pick a random number, 0 or 1, and then just multiply it by 50. And so it'll move uh, to the right, or it won't. It really just is random. And then we're going to go into motion, drag in a change y by, and then use the same block of code. And then we're gonna make some changes to the color. So, or let's take a look at what this looks like first of all. You can see that it'll spawn more randomly and it won't just follow the mouse. So then we're gonna go into color, drag in a change color effect by, you can use the same uh, operator. So we're gonna change the numbers. We're gonna do zero to 10 and then multiply it by five. So you have greater variation in the color. And then we're gonna go to events or actually control, wait, 0.1 second and you can play around with these numbers and then repeat five times and we're just going to make it decrease in size pretty fast so we'll do minus 10 so it's going to do minus 50 overall um, and then we're just going to delete the clone right here okay let's see how this looks as you can see it's like a tail following the mouse and if you hold down there's some randomness which I think looks pretty cool and yeah, that's basically how it works. So we're gonna add one more, it's gonna be like a mouse crosshair cross to this. So we're gonna create a new sprite, upload the costume, this one is called crosshair. And this one I just made in the scratch editor, it's just a black circle, that's really it. Uh, and we're gonna add some code here. So first of all, we don't want it to be full opacity, meaning we want it to be some a little bit transparent so you can see through it. So we're gonna go when flag is clicked, set our ghost effect to 80 so pretty high and then forever point towards our mouse pointer and then move not 10 steps but instead and you guys have probably seen me use this trick before but dragging this distance it'll basically gradually move towards the mouse in a really smooth manner so you can kind of see it there um, I can make it 20 for now just so you can see how it follows but I think it has a really cool effect um, and so let's change this back to 80 and when I full screen you can see that we now have both of these mouse things now as you may guess we only want to slice the fruit or hit the bomb when we are pressing uh, mouse down so we're gonna have to make some updates first of all in our fruit variable or in our fruit sprite we're going to, let's see, where is that? 
we're looking for if touching mouse pointer there it is go into operators drag in an and and we're going to make sure mouse is down as well we're going to apply the same logic to a bomb so instead of just touching mouse pointer we're going to drag in an and and make sure we're doing both of these so you're clicking it and you're on top of it you're clicking the mouse down and you are touching the mouse pointer and just like that as you can see when I go over it nothing happens but when I click it slices and the same applies to the bomb okay so there we go we've added a particle effect and a crosshair to our mouse so let's rename this to particle and crosshair it's not really a crosshair but that's a good name to use next we're going to add critical hits so we're going to paint a new sprite upload the costume again all of these are linked in the description below we're going to use critical.png and we're going to apply some pretty cool code so first of all let's create the animation for this and then we'll bring it into our code and i'll show you guys how we actually uh what the application is so we can delete this we're going to say when flag is clicked whoops then hide because we want to hide the spawner but we want to show all the individual clones because these are going to exist as clones as well so we're going to first go to our mouse pointer uh, go to our mouse pointer and just for some context the critical hits are whenever you slice a fruit we're going to make it so there's a 10 percent chance that you get a bonus 10 points um, and so it's going to spawn on top of the mouse with this pretty cool effect that I'm about to show you. So we're going to set size to 0%. So start it with nothing. And then repeat five times, change size by 10 to get it to 50% of its size. And then repeat twice minus five. So do a little bounce. And then we're going to actually just do the opposite. So we're going to do 2, 5, whoops, and then 5, negative 10. So they're kind of flipped. In between, we, ought, we want to add a wait one second. And then finally, we can delete the clone. So let's see how this looks. I'm going to, as a test, let's just say wait two seconds and then create clone of myself. And you will see it does that effect so I'll, I'll show you again it has this little uh, spawn animation a little bounce and I think it looks pretty cool so now let's actually apply it and create the clones of these um, so we're gonna go into our fruit and we want to be touching the same piece of code that we were working on earlier and let's take this out just to start with so we can you know work in here okay so the first thing we need to do is get a 10% chance that something happens. So the way we do that is you say pick a random number from 1 to 10 and then let that equal to 1. So 1 in 10 chance or 10% that this if condition will happen. So if that happens, we want to change score by 10. Otherwise, just use the regular 1. And when we change it by 10, that low probability event, we also want to create a clone of the critical uh, effect, which is labeled Sprite 1. Let's go and rename that. So we've made this code. Let's bring it back into where it was previously. And then let's drag this underneath. So as you can see, whoops, let me full screen. It'll spawn in a 1 in 10 chance, so it might take us a couple tries. As you can see, it just spawned there. And I really like that animation. That's going to be it for part five of this series. I hope you guys are enjoying this series. I will see you in part six with some cool updates. Make sure to subscribe and leave a like so you're updated for the next part. And I will see you then. Peace.